why would you say this is your favorite movie? Hmm. Honestly, this. I love the aesthetic. I love. I love like an old western. I love desolation. Also, my first time watching this movie was. Uh, I think it came out like 07, so it must have been probably like 08 or something. Yeah. And it was my first time. My family had just splurged. My family never splurges on anything. But the big splurge like of my youth or my, my high school life was my family. We had a deck uh, in the back of our house, and they just like converted it into a, just like a really nice like TV room. And he spent all his money, put a roof over it, and a nice like cat got all like new furniture. And it was our first ever flat screen TV that we ever had. And it was like big for me. It was like huge. And the first movie I ever watched on it was No Country for Old Man, right after I had just finished reading the book. Oh, nice. And so I was just like completely enraptured. And I will say it might be the only movie I've ever seen that is as good, maybe even better than the book, I'll say. I've read the book too, and I feel like they just adapt the book pretty much perfectly. They did it so well. And it looks exactly like how you'd picture it in your mind. And yeah, I love this shit. Just like wind blowing and some <laughs> some fields. <laughs> That's what I was going to, yeah, my other favorite that I was considering doing for this is called uh, The Gray. It's a Liam Neeson movie. They like crash a plane oh, yeah. in like Alaska and they're just like stranded in the snow and there's so many like big sweeping snow shots and I just like man I could just watch that. I could watch a whole movie that's just like shots like this I love that and you, then yeah just the aesthetic of, of is there uh, wolves in that movie? a bunch of wolves yeah, yeah yeah that's why yeah that's the big complaint about that movie is the wolves are picking off these guys and people are like wolves don't do that <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like yeah, but it's Liam Neeson against the wolves. Liam yeah, Neeson picks off wolves. <laughs> yeah, Everyone knows never that. Seen Lee, you've never seen wolves knowing Liam Neeson's near. Yeah, They're, yeah, yeah. They've Liam seen Neeson's... Taken. They know they have to be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No one is fucking with, with Liam Neeson. But yeah, I do love the aesthetic of it. I love the Anton Chigurh character. I love hot-ass Josh Brolin in this movie. That is just a cool-ass, hot-ass man. I'm not against <laughs> just loving a movie because there's a, just a hot-ass protagonist <laughs> I wish you just left it there hot ass that's hot ass but yeah this movie no music no the only soundtrack is wind is wind <laughs> give me some wind and it's so good I just forgot that this was like the opening scene too so this comes out it starts with, a with such a bang yeah you know he so they originally gave this offered this role of Anton Chigurh to uh, Heath Ledger Ooh. oh I didn't know that and dang it's very uh, similar to the Joker too. It is, like, yeah, or really two like, face with the coin flip. Yeah. yeah, but he's just you know has that psychopath energy. Yeah, yeah. Like now the that Joker. you know, looking back, like yeah, he can play a really good psychopath. Yeah, I saw oh. that they when they were interviewing Anton Chigurh or like auditioning him, they also auditioned uh, Mark Strong, and he's Mark the Strong. bald dude from like uh, oh gosh, what's the the movies he get the kids like British play his name's Exy he's like a spy Kingsman Kingsman, Kingsman movies oh yeah I've yeah he's like those. the bald dude the Kingsman movies yeah, oh, yeah. he's he would have been interesting but it had been hilarious like wearing the Anton Chigurh wig being like, <laughs> yeah, it is this such dude's a funny so wig. bald this would be a cool Halloween costume Anton Chigurh I was just get thinking a, that a wig like that I thought about it but I thought I'd, I might look more like a Ramon or something you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah people are like what are you You're the, the Beatles <laughs> when I was actually framing you up in the camera I was like you could pull off Roy Kent. That'd be a song. Roy Kent. Just get from, a black shirt. You're you're golden. Yeah, from uh, Ted Lasso. Oh, I never seen Ted Lasso. Oh man. Well, I guess I gotta watch it and then be Roy Kent. <laughs> yeah, it would be an easy costume for you to pull off. I wonder. Yeah, if people have like said I look like someone or remind them of someone from Ted Lasso. I guess that's it. That's him. <laughs> it's totally yeah. Him. yeah, I yeah. never saw it before, and then I was like looking at the camera, I was like, dang it, <laughs> Roy's over here. Speaking Halloween costumes, though, do you have any one that you've been in the past? Any favorite? Last year I was a Roku remote. And that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I made Wait. it. It was. It looked so good. How did you come up with the idea to be a Roku remote? I was literally just looking at my Roku remote. <laughs> it's just that easy, brother. And I was like, I could probably because I had a black um, apron from the like, year before. I was a, a Ralph's employee. Ralph's is a grocery store in in uh, the West Coast, and so I just made. I got a black apron and I cut out some some felt. Ah, shit. And. uh just made it say Ralph's more like a Ralph's hat. So I still had like the apron. So I just turned it around and I still had more felt. <laughs> and so it was just like markers and paint. I just made like all the, all the buttons. What was the oh, reaction? Here here's the, people uh, love it. So here's the, here's the apron with it, with the remote. Next <laughs> okay, to it. Yeah. Yeah. People, people got it. <laughs> here's me. Well, here's me. Roku city. 
This is also so one day oh, dude. I wore it out twice. The first <laughs> no, no. time I wore uh, yeah. oh, I put yeah. the power button on my head and then people all night were saying that I look like a, a sushi chef. Because <laughs> I just have like it's like a black just like <laughs> So then the next night I put it like on my chest. <laughs> yeah, people think, Are you a Roku sushi chef? Um, but I don't know what I'm gonna be this year. A roll coup. A roll coup. Yeah. <laughs> a roll coup. Um yeah, I don't. I don't know what I'm gonna be this year. I do love Halloween and getting dressed up, but I haven't put any thought into it except for Anton Chigurh. Yeah, I, I say that every year. I was like, no, that's a great. That'd that's be cool. Or like uh, Jigsaw. I always like the Saw movies. You have to have get not a tiny seen the new tricycle. I know a tiny little tricycle <laughs> riding around the party. How many of the Saw movies did you watch? I remember what, I watched the first four. Yeah. And the first three were so good, and the four like went off the rails. Oh yeah, that one got really gory. <laughs> yeah, you know, like more so than the. It was like yeah, I was like, what are we even doing at this point? Me and Dad watched the first one together and liked mm -hmm. it, so we went to the theaters to watch the second one. And the second one is significantly more disturbed than the first one, I feel like. Oh, yeah. Like, right off the bat, when they like, break their legs walking down the stairs, Ugh. my dad was just like, ah, I don't <laughs> like this is, anymore. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, is that the one where they like... leg injuries. It's like the maze. Like, they're all stuck in a yeah. maze. Well, they had oh, to dig oh, the key that. out from behind their eye uh, to like, start the movie. Oh, yeah, show the, uh, the x-ray. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, That's good. I remember there was one. It was like she had to reach her hands to like get a syringe or something. But it, oh, you know, what I'm talking about it. Oh like, yeah, as yeah. it pulls down, it's like oh yeah, it's like the one way glass or yeah. whatever. Ugh. Then just like dropped into a vat of needles. That's what I could do if you had to like choose something from saw to have to go through. I could be dropped into a vat of needles. I think. <laughs> and figure 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 that out. <laughs> <laughs> it's, what's I think it might be four where they start with a. They like cut the guy's Achilles heel, uh, Achilles tendon, while he's asleep, and he wakes up and tries to walk, mm. and his foot just. Yo, yeah. Ugh. I tore my Achilles. And, oh, you did. Oh, it's. Oh, sorry to sorry to bring that up. All you can do is like you can lift your foot. You just have to like slide it forward, but there's no. Oh yeah. It's oh. Yeah. Does that picture you hear it like pop? Oh yeah. How'd you do it? Athletically? Just, yeah, playing basketball. Sick. At least it's that. Yeah, it's, it was. Yeah, it, <laughs> not some bullshit, dude. I hurt my shoulder. And now I have to like uh, do all sorts of. I got a bunch of shots in it and stuff because it was in April. I've had like weird shoulder stuff forever, but it was mostly been fine for like a few years. But then in April, I was at a carnival um, <laughs> in in LA. It's like a tiny shitty carnival, and it was one of those games where you throw the baseball and <laughs> not knock over the bottles, but you have to break the bottles. You get five throws to break two bottles, and so I just thrown five baseballs as hard as I possibly can without stretching or anything and that was uh six months ago now and i'm still <laughs> so much pain i'm like damn i just like fucked my shoulder up doing the dumbest thing it sucked too because you, had you to win hit the two. prize no i didn't hit i didn't hit a single bottle <laughs> and you get so you get five tries and so after i missed the first four so there's no point in even throwing the fifth one because you got to hit two but i still that was probably the one that did it the one that's just out of anger <laughs> oh dude so this fake blood and all this scenes all this was like uh a crazy expense because they had to get fancy sugar-free fake blood. I just watched like a thirty facts you didn't you didn't know about. I didn't just know this. I'm trying to brush up on this movie. I was movie. like, you're in the industry. I can tell. Dude. <laughs> but they had to get like sugar-free blood uh, imported from England for all these blood. And there's a lot of blood in this movie. But they just filmed out in the desert, and there's so many bugs. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. They had to get like expensive sugar sugar-free blood. This is my favorite line. Is when he goes, "I lobos." He goes, ain't no Lobos. That's when I was like, Josh Brolin is the coolest, hottest man around. <laughs> He's awesome. He's really pulling off that mustache, too. Oh, yeah. dude. I uh, watched this with my girlfriend who'd never seen it. We watched it last night. And I love it. But she was just like, last the last movie I made her watch for the podcast <laughs> was uh, American Psycho. So back-to-back mm. -back movies where they kill dogs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she was just like, what is the deal? <laughs> like, I can't with these movies with the dogs. Yeah, dying. just watch John Wick next. <laughs> yeah. This has a few dead dogs in it. Yeah, it's got like mm -hmm. right, two right here right off the bed. She's like, oh, yeah. the dogs. And I was like, oh, it gets worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. He just shoots the dog right in the chest later. Yeah. It makes that noise, too. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, you hate that's oh, a, that's a dog oh, getting yeah. shot. No, yeah, that dog deserved to get shot. Yeah, that was a bad. That was an angry dog. That dog was coming for my man Josh. But the part that really, <laughs> really cracked me up this time around is when they're walking up on the scene, Shigor and those two guys, and one of the guys just goes, "There's a dead dog," and Shigor's like, "Yes, that's a dead dog." Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I lobos ain't no lobos. That's yeah, badass. Ain't got that's no the line that really got me when I was watching this movie. 
like that was a really cool what, delivery. So what's Lo- Lobos? Any idea? Lobos is wolves. Oh, okay. speaking of wolves, all my the, all back to the gray. Uh, yeah, back to <laughs> the, the gray. There's it many always wolves. Comes back to wolves <laughs> yeah. man. That guy's like, close the door. There's wolves. He says in Spanish, and he goes, "Ain't no lobos." Oh, okay. Now shoot my dumb ass. <laughs> he was wanting water. So what are the first things we got you? Oh, fuck, dude. Hell yeah. <laughs> a mug of a picture of me holding a mug of, with a picture of me. It's Mrs. Mugception. Mugception, dude. That's so sick. Thank you. I hope people keep doing this. You got to take a picture of me holding this yeah, mug. Yeah, yeah. We'll definitely get a <laughs> picture. If, if you come on again, that'll, that'll be your yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's so badass. Thank you. Dude, I left this mug. This show, I bombed so bad at this show. You didn't even want the mug as a reminder? Man, I just, that, was, that made it worse. It was like, it was like a nice gift they gave me, and then... He was like checking on me the next day. He's like, you all right? You at home safe? I was like, yeah, man. I, I think I left that mug. And uh, that, we never talked again. <laughs> I felt such, such like a nice gift for the show. And it was so many people. It was probably like 120 people at this show. And uh, they just did not like me. <laughs> it was just not my crowd. And I like, felt bad. The guy booked me. I like someone dropped out. So he booked me and he paid me well. And got a big crowd in there. And they just didn't like me. There's a lot of like old people. I never do that well with old. Oh. I mean, who does? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, some young people that were like, "Sorry, man, tough crowd." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, dude, that's never good." <laughs> yeah, yeah. One of my hardest bombs was actually in front of my whole family um, at a casino, and it was in uh, in Connecticut. And so they live in Massachusetts. They're like, "We'll come out to that." It was like two hour drive, and uh, but it was that there's an early show and a late show at this club in this casino. And I said, usually the early shows are better than late shows. Like 8 o'clock, usually better than like 10 o'clock. People are tired. So I told my family, and they brought a bunch of friends. I was like, come to the early show. But I didn't realize that the shows were 6 and 8. Oh. So it started at 6 p.m. in July, just broad daylight. And uh, everyone there was so old. It was just, the lights came on. It was just like a sea of white hair. And I bombed so bad in front of my whole, my mom, it was her birthday. <laughs> oh. <laughs> And I was like, it's the only reaction I got. I was like, it's my mom's birthday. Give it up. And I got a smattering of applause. And then that was the only noise the crowd made. The whole... You have to keep going back to that. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give it up one more time. My mom. She's the best. <laughs> yeah, it was deafening silence. And it sucks, too, when it's like no one's laughing. My, my sister brought like 15 friends. Uh, really, really built this show up. And it sucks afterwards. Like my family coming out after is being like, tough crowd. And I was like, but that was a bunch of jokes where I'd hear, I heard no laugh. So like, you guys were also not laughing. <laughs> I know for sure that zero people were laughing at a lot of these jokes. Like my best jokes too, just like radio silence. Um, so yeah, that's, old crowds are, are brutal. Waiting for laughs that don't come. Oh God, like, yeah. Do I just start my next joke? So, oh, yeah, you God. get through your set in like 15 minutes less time. There's you know no pause for any laughter. It's like okay, I'll gotta keep moving on to that. Maybe this next one will get a laugh. Um, yeah, I mean, this tour has been up and down. Uh, excited for tonight's show. Yeah, I think tonight's show is going to be great. Here in Birmingham. But it has been, yeah, it has been a, a whirlwind. So, like, a bunch of Missouri shows that were weird. <laughs> it's like, really, like, small town Missouri shows. <laughs> Where like in show Missouri? All over, dude. A bunch of, like, small towns. Just like this buddy of mine lives out there. He just set me like up with, like, a, a lot bunch of places of... in this movie. <laughs> dude, yeah. <laughs> That's like that. All those dead people were a lot bigger than some of the crowds I've, I was doing in Missouri. I, that's what, but I was getting those kind of reactions. Who's this actress? I don't know, but she's she, a babe. She kills it. It's I, full of money. I know you all saw that in the book that Lou Ellen is 36 Ellen. and she's 19, and they'd been married for three years. Oh, really? Mm, so he wow. was 33, married to a 16-year-old. Damn, that's how they well, did it. It takes place in 1980, 1980. so... Yeah, you could do that in 1980. Yeah, that was cool. Then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, I love this relationship. It's just like Jean gives her. She, she zero seems love. pretty smart for a 19 year old, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That guy's living the dream. Cool ass 19 year old wife. Keep trailer, <laughs> all of trailer wife. An endless supply of beer and milk in the fridge. <laughs> this scene, you can see this, just like staring straight forward. It just looks bizarre. Like he's trying to look like he's watching TV, but it's clear. It's like, let's just get the shot. Yeah. The way gonna... too, it's like, you keep that up, and we'll have to take you in the back and screw you. Take you in the back and screw you. Yeah. <laughs> big no... talk. Big talk. Like, what do you see in this man? Well, yeah. He's just, just a hot ass guy. This is, where, this is where it all goes wrong. This is where his conscience, conscience gets the best of him. Mm-hmm. And he gives the guy that agua. Oh, you are fucking He didn't give it to him in a personalized mug, though, so it's just not that <laughs> yeah. good of a gift. <laughs> yeah. Next time, give me just a dirty jug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, this is where y'all, you fucked. He's too good of a man. That's why you gotta root for him. <laughs> just coming back that night and be like, gotcha, some water, dude. I'm still gonna leave <laughs> you here. Was, yeah, dad, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do y'all hey. think if y'all uh, happen ac- across like a crime scene like this and y'all found the money, do you think you'd take the money? Or no, what, what would you do? I would leave. Oof. I probably would have left when I saw the crime scene. I probably would like, oh, yeah, oh my just, like, God. See, I'd, if I saw a dead person from far away, I'd, I'd run. <laughs> I'd get the hell out I'd of there. I'd go, ew, ew, God. <laughs> so I'd probably pass Yucky. out. Yeah. <laughs> ew, ew. The cops would show up think you're one of the dead people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. You open the door with that guy yeah. who wants all going, like, ah! <laughs> Up until this point, this is the dream. Just finding a bunch of money, <laughs> get a nice day of hunting, shoot some deer, find two million dollars. Denying a thirsty man water. Yeah. <laughs> we all yeah, know yeah, he yeah. had water on him. <laughs> to see some dead dogs. It's a pretty good day. The next gift I got for you is one of your favorites. Oh, fuck. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. Elisa Kudrow shirt. <laughs> I hope she has a, a bad day. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, Elisa Kudrow. Dude. Yeah, so this is from a tweet uh, that I tweeted, at, not even at Lisa Kudrow, I just said just Lisa Kudrow. And just dude, 2012, I was just tweeting so much, just like avant-garde, God, <laughs> it doesn't make any sense, just like a non sequitur, dumb shit. But I tweeted, I hope everyone has a great day or a great weekend, except you, Lisa Kudrow, fuck you. <laughs> and it just like made no sense, it got like two likes, it made no sense. And then somehow in 2014, I think, it ended up on Jimmy Kimmel's <laughs> Mean tweets. I hope you all have a great weekend. Except you, Lisa Kudrow. F- you. <laughs> so they must have just searched Lisa Kudrow in Twitter. No one's tweeting about Lisa Kudrow. Okay, I didn't so even you didn't, tweet like, at her. Submit it to be on the no, show or anything. They found it. I was, I was at like a show, and I look. I look at my phone after. I just got like I had like a thousand notifications <laughs> on Twitter. I was like, what the fuck? And a bunch of people just like responding to the tweet and, and liking the tweet. And a lot of people were angry about the tweet. And I was like, why did this tweet blow up all of a sudden? It took me like an hour to find out how this happened. I was just like scrolling back and I was like, oh, it's on Jimmy Kimmel. Um, but I have no problem with Lisa Kudrow. Friends uh, Mafia came at me hard after that. <laughs> My God, dude. People were so upset. What did Lisa Kudrow ever do? She's a saint. And I'm like, I love Lisa Kudrow. It was a silly, it makes no sense. The joke is how likable she is. It's just like a guy for no reason hates Lisa Kudra. But yeah, Friends Mafia came at me hard. And there was this one person who, I think it might have been a teenager, who uh, reached out and was clearly just like, I don't know if the, she was maybe, English wasn't her first language, or if she was just like, really dumb. Was it and Carla Jean? It might have been Carla Jean. <laughs> Damn, wish I had known what a hot babe it was. <laughs> but she was like, what did Lisa Kudra do to you? And I was like, made up this story about how she like, she kicked my grandpa in the head. And this person was just like, clearly just not all there. The person I was talking to and was like believing it. And I was like, it was like a book signing. And and she like, roundhouse kicked my grandpa in the head and he died. And she was like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that about your grandpa. <laughs> and uh, just like believing this ridiculous story. And then I posted it on on Instagram. Hey, I saw, I saw, you saw that. that. Yeah, that, that was hilarious. Oh my God. I was like, yeah, it was just like pages long, this interaction. She's like, I'm sorry. Then I was like, Can we be friends? She's like, let's be friends. And there was like a, a nice ending that I posted that. <laughs> and then everyone was like laughing. And then she saw that, that I had been like just making fun of her. And that was, that was, man, I don't know when I posted that. It was about like four or five years ago at this point. And uh, people, she's still to this day, were just like, will comp just leave like 10 comments in a row just be like you are an awful person i hope you die just randomly send messages and comments still to this day she's still so upset that i used her oh here comes a big dog death yeah dude here's a big i one. love that he just is so patient too and like blowing yeah, out blowing the it. water yeah and- such mm-hmm. a badass he's so smart so smart get his ass how oh. damn right through the heart oh that's still like hurt dude, dude. he died you didn't way he, too fast the noise is the worst part of yeah. that yeah it really like, it's even though the dog's vicious it makes it sound like a golden retriever like, yeah yeah it sounds like it didn't deserve to die how but it did many times would that dog have bitten you if you had been the one trying oh, to load dude, the gun just go at it like you're getting ready to punch <laughs> yeah. it i guess i have had to throw the clip <laughs> yeah. try, there's try to no like, way i would have got the gun loaded yeah you used to video that guy that like got attacked by the bear when he was rock climbing and then he like throws the bear doesn't what? throw the but the bear comes at him and he like dodges it and kind of like pushes it off like this cliff. oh wow it is wild he's wearing a gopro and he's rock climbing we'll, and there sink, was a, we'll sink it in yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. we're gonna have it's it. wild <laughs> it's uh i guess there was the, the a cub was nearby and that was the, the mother and it was a black bear it's like a small bear 
but any bear it just comes charging at him he's like climbing he hooks the left and he just sees this bear charge at him he's like ah he's just screaming oh man and he like dodges it it's so sick I would love to see a video from like of him and not just like his GoPro because I want to know how he like just he, maneuvered he, like, out of the way. It. <laughs> yeah, and then fall, then the bear starts like trying to climb back up the cliff and like bite him, bite his feet. Oh, but he's and just, he's just like, faster. He's just no, he's just like kicking the bear in the face and he's just screaming like ah ah. Like, can you fucking imagine that? <laughs> no, that's badass. So yeah, that's what I would have done if the dog came at me. In conclusion, <laughs> I'm just fucking throwing it, throwing it off a, into the river. They need to uh, like free solo. It's like that's the next step. Add bears. Yeah, Add yeah. Bears. yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, one flaw in the movie I caught mm. these Jack Links by, back here. It's like modern packaging. It's supposed to be 1980. Jack Links, because I was like, this is so you know, it's a great scene, but it was like, huh? This is it's the noticed. only thing I caught that was like, this isn't. Uh, huh. That's not 1980. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, those, dude, that, those, yeah, those yeah, like those brand like new. Slim yeah, yeah, brand yeah. new Jack. And Jack like, Links Jack didn't Links come out until like 1986. It's got the Sasquatch huh. on it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's so crazy. Like, what a what easy thing to fill in the back with just like something that's not. A Jack Links <laughs> put like some cans or soup or something. We gotta get the maybe Jack Bread. Links was like yeah yeah. Anything. Like everything else is so old and perfect in here too. Yeah, I this, wonder if they did it for a reason. I think money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Get, get those Jack Links. They got that in there. Sasquatch money. <laughs> that Sasquatch money. <laughs> this scene in the book takes place like at dusk, and he's like, "We gotta get going." It's yeah, it's around nine thirty. We close, but here it's just like broad daylight. He's like, "We're we're closing, dude. <laughs> You're terrible. <terrifying. laughs> get away from me." That was a great scene though. Oh, it's What's the most we'll you ever lost on a coin toss? What's the most you ever lost on a coin toss? Sir? The most you ever lost on a coin toss? I don't know. I couldn't say. Call it. Call it, yes. And for what? Just call it. Well, we need to know what we're calling it for here. You need to call it. I can't call it for you. Well, it wouldn't be fair. I didn't put nothing up. Yes, you did. You've been putting it up your whole life. You just didn't know it. If you had to pick heads or tails, I would say tails. Tails never fails. I saw something online that's like the the head side has more metal or whatever on it, and it's like one billionth of an ounce, slightly heavier. So I think statistically, I don't know if that's true. I did read that one time. <laughs> it does. These are the conspiracy <laughs> theories I care about. <laughs> so, so it's coin not 50-50. Right it's wow. not 50-50. It's 50.00001. No, Javier Bardem, he didn't even want to play this. He, did, he, doesn't, he was like, I don't speak English well enough. And he speaks English great in this. Yeah. There are a couple scenes you can kind of hear like his accent just slightly. Imagine English is not even first language and you have to like do a really believable but also weird like English voice. Like he's doing his own thing with this character. And he doesn't even speak English that well. And he hates violence, he said. Yeah, which yeah. is so funny, because the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> the first scene is just like bringing those chains through, through that guy's oh. neck. And he's just like, I don't know. I don't really like violence. There we go. Yeah, watch this. It'll be Tails, no problem. Oh, okay. Call it. <laughs> Tails. <laughs> Nice. I'm a genius. <laughs> These are also the new. You, you don't you, have to kill him. Way to go. Yeah, he's playing like the angel of death. He operates mm -hmm. pretty much on it. It can come for anyone. It's not me. It's the coin. It is just a, an awful haircut. <laughs> it makes it more terrifying, though. This guy's just like so insane that he <laughs> would look like that. <laughs> like Heath Ledger, the Joker had like cool hair. I mean, green, but also just cool, wavy, yeah. he just like, you know, slicked back, dirty hair, like looked kind of badass. This guy, he just looks so bad in this yeah but it adds to the the terrifying factor it really does that looks great that look is so good <laughs> yeah it's like a little bit a little sassy i uh no you got fired and you probably weren't able to clean out your office so i went hell? by oh and my god grabbed dude. that for you dude fuck yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah mr Kraz, baby <laughs> yeah american vandal was a show i was on that still to this day is the by far the most like episodes of anything I've ever done. The first like recurring character I've ever yeah. done. Dude, I actually I got this because I met the uh the director and creator. There's a couple of guys created it. Dan Peralt and Tony Ascenda. And I met Tony on a train in twenty sixteen, I think. Uh, and he knew my sketch group. It's called Dead Kevin. And it was a train at from like downtown LA after a music festival. And we were both like rolling on Molly. <laughs> and it was this packed train. I was with my girlfriend at the time. We were just like up against the corner of the train. And he was like on the other side of this packed train car. And he was like, hey. 
He's like, you're in Dead Kevin. And like everyone in the train car is like turning and look. No one knows what that is. <laughs> but I was like, yeah, dude. He's like, you're funny, man. And I was like, thanks, man. And then like he left. As he left, I remember him. He walked. His stop was before mine. He got off and he says, "Jump serious, man. Like you're like Kyle Mooney level funny." And like at the time, I had just auditioned for SNL a couple of years before, and like didn't get it. Kyle Mooney got it, so I always like had something. Oh. <laughs> all, all the characters I do are a little like <laughs> stuttering and mispronouncing, like a little mm -hmm. Mooney esque. So I've always been like, oh, man, I appreciate that." <laughs> then he he reached out on Facebook like a week later, a couple weeks later, and he was like, "Hey, man, that was me on the on the train. I was the guy from that train a couple weeks ago." I'm, I'm making a show for Netflix right now, uh, and I think he'd be perfect for this character. And I 100% thought he was just like a crazy person. I was, I'm sure you have a, a show for Netflix, <laughs> guy from the train that was on Molly. <laughs> Probably just like is writing something and wants to submit it to Netflix. Is yeah. what he means. I was like, yeah. Then he sent me the audition. It was like a real audition studio that I've like gone to before. I was like, oh, this is like an actual show. And I went out and I got it. If they told me it was between me and another guy, and the other guy that they were describing sounds like would have been even better. <laughs> I'm like, well, thanks for giving it to me, but that guy sounds so funny. He like cried in the audition because the character is like, uh, he's supposed to be just like a. I think they wrote it for more of like a middle aged guy. So then like Funny or Die, who was producing it, was kind of fighting back, saying that I was like too young. And uh, but a couple of the writers, the McManus brothers, they were like writers on the show, and they like really fought for me. They're like, this guy is just like he's got whatever factor they're looking for uh, but he's just like a lonely guy who wants to fit in with the high school kids so bad and like he wants them to think he's cool but he's clearly just like a loser and is like kind of depressed which is funny for like a a schlubby middle-aged man so i'm surprised they gave it to me but it ended up working out but the oh, guy they great. had he was like just talking about how sad he is and he started like crying in the audition i was like how do you not give the role <laughs> to that guy who's crying as like the kids they don't think i'm cool and I'm like i would be dying i would 100 percent have chosen him but i'm glad they did <laughs> well I, I thought it worked better with you being younger because it felt like you know i have i have a few friends that are teachers nowadays and yeah. some of those guys it feels like they're too close in age you know yeah, where yeah. it's like oh you just want to still be in school <laughs> yeah. yeah i just want them to think i'm cool <laughs> but even like getting the woke while on Molly is definitely kind of a crass thing to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It is yeah, it was, it, was, it was very, it was very crass. I got I ended up uh, fitting the character pretty well. I listened to Drake. This is from last weekend. I got the two weekend pass. This weekend is Skrillex. So yeah, I get it. Um, yeah, I'm glad they let me do that. That was a lot of fun. It was a ton of uh, like improvising and stuff. I think you can tell. It's supposed to be a play on uh, making a murderer. Um, like yeah. a who done it kind of thing. Yeah, I watched a lot of documentaries. So when that came out, it was oh, like it was right incredible. up my alley. Oh, really? oh, and, yeah. I, and I was sad whenever you got fired because like it was Dude, like yeah. it was like oh man, that guy's one of the best parts of the show. <laughs> yeah. I know. I was hoping they would leave it up for I mean to be in like season two. I got fired. I like went to a new school or something like that. <laughs> it's just like a, a lot of people watch that show and not even like remember that character. But the ones who do will be like, oh my god, dude, yes, that fucking weird guy. <laughs> Actually, the uh, I think I'm in. Maybe, I think it might have been the first episode or second. I, I think it might have think been the first. This was going to do this well. I said a dude. lot of things I should not have said. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was fun. I must say, let me just mess around. And, uh, but I think it's the first episode uh, where I, I only have one line, and I, it's that line where I say that one of my students is hot. Yeah. She's 17. And oh, I'm like, yeah. I don't want to say that one of my students is like hot, so I won't. I've had her in class, and she is distracting. You know, I'm not, I'm not going to say one of my students is unbelievably hot. And that's like, that's the only line I have in the whole episode, I think. Um, and I clearly just like think I'm calling the 17 year old girl hot. And in the, we did the, uh, uh, the premiere when it first came out and they showed just the first two episodes in like a movie theater. And so that's the only line I have in either episode. I'm not in the second episode. So then afterwards we all go to like this after party and it's like everyone on the show and people don't only know me as, wait, what, what's your character? So you... <laughs> You're like a pervert? <laughs> You're like a pe this pedophile character? I was like, no, I, I say more stuff later. <laughs> That's all anyone knew. <laughs> the guy that just likes There's the a lot more depth old. in Crash. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> this is a great scene. Oh, yeah, dude. This, like, uh, this goofy kind of sidekick is a, is a fun choice. He, so it cracked me up. He auditioned five times for uh, Javier Bardem's role. Oh, for Javier Bardem's yeah. role? Oh, my God. And didn't get it. And I mean, they gave him this role. Yeah, so you know he like has to be kind of like, or no, excuse me, not for Harvey, but for uh, Josh Brolin. Josh Brolin, that makes yeah. more yeah, sense. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I just said the wrong name there, but it's hilarious. And now he's just goofy. Oh my gosh, we yeah, all dude, got him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh no, oh no, <laughs> sheriff. Oh, sheriff, we just missed him. 
we got to circulate this on radio. Imagine uh, five auditions. I, I imagine they kept bringing him back. And you got to feel good after doing that many oh, auditions. Yeah. I'm like, they must really like me. Then They're you like, hear Josh Brolin. And you're like, the God audience. damn it. Can I be the... <laughs> His the sexy ass absolute. got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's just a little sexier. <laughs> yeah, I would have loved to see that. Um, yeah, he walks out of his audition this fifth time. He's like, I just nailed it. Then he sees dude. Josh just waiting. Yeah, Josh ah. in the waiting room, just on his phone. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, then he plays this absolute dank of a man. He's good, though. He's fun. But uh, I wonder if he just like had to audition for this one, too. Or if they're just like, we're sorry, dude. After giving you five auditions for the main one, we got to give you something. Just to cover the gas from coming here so much. <laughs> yeah. I just spend so much time with Tommy Lee Jones. I wonder if he's cool. Tommy Lee. Well, have you heard the story of Jim Carrey when they worked together on Batman like forever or yeah. whatever? No. He saw him in a restaurant and just, he just did not, he said, he walked up to him and was like, oh, there's Tommy Lee, I'll go talk to him. He said, Tommy Lee, like the blood went from his face. Like it went like all white huh. and he stood up and like shook his hand and was just like, I do not sanction your buffoonery. He said, yeah, I, he said I hate you. <laughs> oh my God, what? <laughs> You know, Jim Carrey, I'm sure on set would be a lot to deal with, but still. They... Oh, he means just like, yeah, after we haven't worked with him. <laughs> I thought he meant just like his movies. I'm like, I hate your stuff. Wow, Dumb so they Dumber. did not get along, huh? Dumb and Dumber was not smart. Didn't sound like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's a bummer. He's Tommy Lee, he's great. He's, you know, had a, he's played a 70-year-old for like 50 years. It's yeah. Incredible. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah, it's always, always 07. He's almost like... retiring, it feels like, as yeah. a cop or something. And then Josh Brolin ends up playing Tommy Lee uh, Jones, like a younger version of him in uh, Men in Black 3. Ah, uh, oh, yeah. Oh, really? I forgot about that. Yeah, like four or five years after this. Man, there's so much stuff I just have not seen. Yeah, when you guys reached out about what's your favorite movie, I'm like, man, I forget a movie I've seen immediately after it's done. Just like, it's been that way for years. I'm just like, have you seen this movie? And I'm like, yeah. And people are like, remember that part with this? And I'm just like, absolutely not. <laughs> I remember like kind of what it looked like. <laughs> I remember kind of some of the characters. Yeah, if you ever see Men in Black 3, you don't really know movies. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah maybe that's, uh, I'll come back next time and I'll watch Men in Black 3. Now this is psychotic, just uh, sitting there just drinking milk. <laughs> Did you guys drink milk growing up or do you drink milk now? I used to, not, not, not I anymore. I drink almond milk. Dude, I tried to get into almond milk. I grew up drinking skim milk. That would be Same. great if he was like, no almond milk. <laughs> <laughs> he just yeah. pours out the milk. <laughs> Ew! <laughs> I'm like, yuck! <laughs> this lady's great, too. She's awesome. She's like the only yeah, one that intimidates him back. She's yeah, like, she, doesn't, she doesn't back down at all. <laughs> I love that she, yeah, she just doesn't give a shit at all. <laughs> she just makes complete, like, she's staring just as much as he is. <laughs> yeah, dude. He's like, oh, shit, oh, fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> I fucked up, dude. They should like. He they doesn't should, even flip the cord. Dude, this would be a great couples costume for Halloween. <laughs> That'd be so sick. We can't give out that information, God, dude. It looks like they're about to make out these two. <laughs> the tension. It's funny watching yeah. it. Yeah, watching it in silence. Like, are they the love? only song they use in the whole movie? He kicks <laughs> yeah. in right now. Da, 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 da. Let's get it on. <laughs> Let's get it on. <laughs> he like walks out and walks back. He <laughs> yeah, just yeah. shows him lock the door, <laughs> shut the blinds. <laughs> There's that other scene going up where he like leaves the hotel room and he like comes storming back in and throws the light on later in this. Oh, It'd yeah, be so yeah. funny if he did it here too. <laughs> he goes back in. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Can I get your number? <laughs> Are there any vacant trailers, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Where does he work? I can't say. Where does he work? Sir, I ain't at liberty to give out no information about our residence. Where does he work? Did you not hear me? We can't give out no information. There you go, sending her on that bus. He didn't have buses in 1980. This is some bullshit. <laughs> Gotta quit warning so much. Send her away. Man, I want a mustache. Next gift What's this? got for you. Jeez, you guys have so many gifts. Oh my God, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. Prime Frankie. This is current day Frankie. Yeah. He looks yeah, exactly this is the racing same. Frankie. <laughs> man, oh man. Yeah, dude. Frankie muted. So you saw my video where I... Put a bunch of shit yeah. all over my... That was during COVID. Oh, really? That was uh, early COVID, and Comedy Central was trying to, like, make videos of uh, some way, somehow, like, new content. So they reached out to a few comics to just, like... I forget what, like, the prompt was. It was, do, it was do, like, a... Kind of like MTV Cribs kind of thing, mm -hmm. like, alone in your place, and you can do, like, selfie style. And they're, like... They emailed me or, or messaged me. and like, you want to do that? And, like, make it funny in some way. A tour of your apartment. Try to make it funny. 
Um, and I was like, all right. And I sent him a few ideas. And I, I, my idea was like, what if I'm just like a stalker and I'm obsessed with someone? And they're like, we like that. So I sent him a few like people. I remember having like Hillary Duff on there, and they were like, hey, it's, it should be a, a guy. It's kind of creepier if it's a girl. I'm like it's funnier if it's just like a guy. Um, then I had yeah, just a bunch of like adults, all different ages and stuff. I think I had like Neil deGrasse Tyson or something like that. And they were like, Frankie Muniz is the funniest one. I so I printed it. out. I had to go to fucking yeah, with my mask on, go to FedEx and print out like sixty Frankie Muniz pictures <laughs> and put them all over my apartment. No, and you did Hillary Duff too. Makes me think you're just a big fan of Agent Cody Banks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. I'm just obsessed with it. I'm just freak out if I ever met anyone from that cast. So so they chose Frankie Muniz though. They oh yeah, of my of my options, they're like let's do it, go with Frankie Muniz. And I put a bunch of pictures around my apartment. And I filmed it. Uh, yeah. The, so the so the video is just it's like a probably two minute long video doing an MTV Cribs tour. It's like yeah, it's COVID right now. You know, I just want to see you guys. This is where I'm living. And I put pictures like on my mirror and on the walls. And I bought a a blow up doll and put a picture of his face <laughs> on the face. Like the cheapest blow up doll on Amazon, you can get like a twenty dollar blow up doll. So I didn't get any good use out of it. Right? It wasn't like one of the good ones. That would have been funny. If I got Comedy Central paper, it was like one of those really fancy lifelike things. Of, I'm going to need $10,000 to do this video. Yeah, to do this just a bit at the end. But then Frankie Muniz saw it and retweeted it. Oh, really? And so that was cool. I think he posted it. was like, at least someone appreciates me. <laughs> Thanks, Frankie. I'm not in the middle anymore. <laughs> yeah, now I'm on top. Now he does. What does he do like? Racing? NASCAR or something? Yeah, yeah racing. Like Formula One or something. Formula yeah. One. Dude, that's wild. Formula One is getting so huge. I'm not into racing like at all. Are you guys? No. They're, they're building a whole Formula One track in Vegas that's going to go like oh, yeah. on the street and through casinos. Whoa, And like that's when they sick. have events, you can't get into Vegas, I guess. Yeah. Could you <laughs> imagine like, like trying to do stand-up while there's a Formula One? Right? <laughs> yeah, they do it at night. <laughs> <laughs> it looks wild, though. Yeah, I was there a couple weeks mm -hmm. ago. Doing some some up and down shows. I never done a week anywhere before. I never done Vegas before, but I did a week in Vegas, and How it was, was it? it's hard, man. It's super fun because I love Vegas, so it's cool to just like I get to be in Vegas for a week, and I would have taken very little money to do it because I just love going <laughs> to Vegas. But I went and the shows. It was really interesting. The crowds are always they're so different. They're all just different groups of tourists from different places and different reasons for being in Vegas. Some people are there for work. Some people are like bachelor parties and stuff and so every crowd was just so different but i had a couple sets that i just ate shit and both the other so the headliner and the, i was featuring and so the headliner and the host were both crushing every single show and there's a couple shows where i just could not keep up and i felt so dumb <laughs> and the headliner he gave me like a his name's greg warren and he was just crushing every show he's a st louis guy yeah, yeah, yeah. and he was so good he's such like a fucking just, he a, just such put a, out a special pro. it's great oh really yeah oh yeah the one uh uh, I was in the book Blue Shirt, a blue background, whatever. What it's called? The Salesman? I think so. I'd um, have to look yeah. it up. I don't know if that's his newest one, but it's one called The Salesman. But he's so funny. And but he like he the, my very first show of the week, it was six days. My first one, I came out and I was like, I'm trying to be more like just more loosey goosey and not rely too much on my like material. Sometimes I just like get into autopilot and I'm just like doing my jokes and the it's not really interacting with the crowd or anything. I'm trying to like get out of that and like be more loose and do more crowd work and riffing and stuff and come out with like with no plan for like the first few minutes and just kind of see how it is and see how the crowd is so i was trying to do that and it didn't go well at all I came out, so five minutes i was trying to just like do god I'm, i suck at crowd work so i'm just like trying to do that that's not working do like some vegas riffing and hey you guys going to this show or that show tape face i was trying to make make a joke about tape face which is a <laughs> show in vegas where a guy has tape on his mouth and he's like does like mimes i guess i think that's what it is <laughs> he was on like america's got talent i think but there's billboards all over vegas and signs everywhere i see tape face and i was like guys going to see tape face you know just thinking that that was funny enough to mention him <laughs> just no one's laughing at that and then just trying to joke about how bad i'm doing and just like it's all just a brutal five minutes and then i was like all right i'll just do my jokes and i started doing my jokes and that went great so 20 minutes set i did like five god awful minutes and then 15 good minutes and then after the show, we're all hanging out drinking. And I felt pretty good that I at least got 15 good minutes. I was like, felt kind of awkward about that, the beginning of it. But then Greg, bless him, he was like, he was about to go back to his room, and then he doubles back, Anton Chigurh style. <laughs> <laughs> Slams the door back open, flicks the light up. He's going to his room, and he comes back, and he goes, have you done Vegas before? And I was like, no, it's my first time here. And he goes, can I give you some advice? And I was like, ah, fuck, <laughs> like that sucks. Yeah. I'm like 15 years into comedy and I'm like <laughs> getting advice still. And it was warranted.
uh, it was Greg Warren. Greg Warren. <laughs> <laughs> um, but he goes, gave advice. I was like, yeah, he goes, just, just come out swinging. He's like, these crowds, they're in Vegas. They're here for just like entertainment. They don't want to hear, he goes, they don't want to hear you talk about tape face. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, fair enough. He didn't tell me anything that I didn't already know. I was like, yeah. oh, come out and get laughs. Okay, I'll try that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, but it was, it was a cool moment. Old I was kind of like, I was like, kind of, I was like embarrassed and like, humbled but it was also cool that he just like because he was like i watched the rest of your set you're really funny but just you got to come out faster these people are just like they're all tourists they just like they were staying here in the hotel they came to this show they don't know who you are they just want like jokes 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 and it was cool that he had like it was like a man-to-man kind of moment that he had yeah. with me where he was like i i think if i just bombed he would just been like well that guy sucks it's gonna be a Maybe long do week more tape face stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's like yeah just keep doing that it'll just it'll start working i swear just keep <laughs> keep polishing the tape face stuff. <laughs> uh, but it was cool that he was just like yeah he's, he's like I, I know you're funny just like don't don't do that but it was cool <laughs> that he had faith enough in me to be like i can i'll give you like a note because yeah. he's such a road dog he does vegas all the time he's works pretty much every weekend and it was yeah it was interesting to see if i ever go to vegas again i know just like bang 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 it's a bang 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 kind of entertainment kind of town yeah but i'm yeah coming off of this like i just come off of like a west coast tour where it was like a, maybe 16 17 days where i was doing a show every day and by the end i was just so exhausted that i was like i was there's a couple of shows where i didn't do any material at all and it wasn't that good but i was just like kind of enjoying just like living in the moment and kind of talking to the crowd and stuff and the shows were always fine but i was just like so sick of my own jokes and I was kind of coming off of that into Vegas, which was so different. Like, you could do your jokes and make it your best stuff right now. And I was just like, oh, so it was like a wake-up call. So I'm still trying to find, like, a happy medium somehow in my touring and my set. It's got to be do your, your jokes and then a little bit of riffing, a little bit of crowd work, and just be able to – I kind of struggle. Once I start doing one, it's kind of hard to, to, to transition. Yeah, I think so. Um, and I'm, my material is a lot better than my, like, crowd work and riffing. Um but you'd be surprised seeing my material <laughs> that, it's, that it's that it's better uh but it's at least a, a more surefire thing so next thing we got you i know you're a big <laughs> panthers fan whoa fuck so we got you sex panther by odeon is this, is this sex panther it's made with oh. bits of real panther oh dude 60 so you know of the time good. works every time <laughs> damn is this real cologne yeah Damn, can I put it on? Yeah, you'll smell good. It's for, you know, <laughs> if you go to Vegas, you got to smell good. Oh, I got it, dude. It's quite pungent. So <laughs> I feel like you could put it in there, potentially. Yeah, what's this? Do I, I put think, it in here? I, yeah, I think that's like... Uh, dude, this is so sick. Just like part of the <laughs> gag of it all. <laughs> the gag of it all. Yeah, where do you find this? Was this like from the... We know people. Oh, you know, you know people <laughs> in the cologne. We, we got a... Brian yeah, Fantana. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys yeah. smelled it yet? I, uh, nah, I, I took the lid off and I think, it, I think it's just pure gasoline in there. So <laughs> yeah. be careful. It smelled like Bigfoot's dick. <laughs> <Can I spray laughs> yeah, go Can for I spray it. spray my wrist? Yeah. <laughs> spray my wrist. Time to musk up. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah. Yeah. It's better, better than I thought it would be. Yeah. yeah. yeah this, is like the the <laughs> got, this is like the time the raccoons got, this is like the time the raccoons got the copier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Man, me and my friends do a lot of uh, themed nights and we do like wig night. And sweats night, ugly t shirt night, sugar night. Just for the hell of it. Like Shug just hanging night. around the house. <laughs> yeah, just like oh, going to like bars. Okay, okay. It's funny when we go to bars, just looking really dumb. Like wig night was so funny. <laughs> and my friend's birthday, we did like a sweats night, and everyone's in full sweats. <laughs> T.I. Uh, uh, turtlenecks and chains night oh nice nice but i was trying to get just everyone just drench yourself in cologne <laughs> night <laughs> and we all go out and everyone's just like what the fuck it would be so funny <laughs> oh, man. i love shit like that <laughs> so now that i have this i still have my cologne from high school in my bathroom so you'll I'll, have this forever i'll have it forever <laughs> what, how do you run out of cologne i wear cologne every if i'm like smell really bad <laughs> Which isn't a lot. You still have like Hollister cologne. <laughs> yeah, dude, I, got like, I have like Bod. Remember Bod? And like shit like that. I have a, like a case. It's a little box with four colognes. I got it for Christmas. Must have been f freshman year, or sophomore <laughs> year of high school. And I still have all four in the box, just like in my bathroom, like a drawer in my bathroom. It's just like every once in a while, I'm like, all right, I'm going out of the town today. I'll put my Bod on. Time to spritz up. <laughs> yeah. Might as well use them, like spray my apartment or something. <laughs> I gotta find some use for these things. Yeah, this is so badass. Dude, I have so much Panthers stuff, but this is what, I have so many like, I'm a big Panthers fan in my apartment. I've been told 
has way too much Panthers stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so what I've been trying to do is get more Panthers. It's it will get stuff that's like not just like kitschy, just like fucking lame Panthers logo shit everywhere. Just get like stuff like this that's just like cooler like Panthers stuff. I have like nice Panthers coasters and shit like that that has like a play. It doesn't have the logo. It's got like a like a f- famous plays that are like etched into this uh slate coaster stuff like that. Keep it like keep it a little bit classy. But yeah, I've been taking stuff down. Especially the Panthers are so bad that I'm just like, this is this sucks to, <laughs> to, to have up in my apartment. Yeah, I remember I had like a like those five panels that people will have with like a picture that's in five different panels. And it was just like the just the Panthers logo <laughs> yeah. above my TV. There was one I saw one time above a bed that said "Keep Pounding," and it was like <laughs> that feels like a weird place yeah, to don't put, that put it right above, above the bed. The bed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's probably yeah. Most of my stuff is like in my room now. <laughs> if I bring a girl back, oh, this is a, this is a little boy's room. It looks like I have a little boy's room. <laughs> Panther Panthers bed sheets. <laughs> dude. I had Panthers bed sheets for so long. I wonder when I got. I was like very much an adult when I stopped having Panthers bed sheets, <laughs> and they were like. They were almost like mesh. They were like a, like a, a moisture wicking material. Jersey. <laughs> yeah, it was like a, it was like supposed to be like a jersey, I guess. Um, why, why are you such a Pan- Panthers fan? Are you from, uh, are you from there? Or? No, I'm from Massachusetts. Okay. Could have, should have been a Patriots fan. Would have been a lot more fun. A lot easier, yeah. Uh, but I got a Panthers hat when I was seven, <laughs> and it fucked my life up. With all hats you could have gotten. That's Dude, so funny. Yeah, it was '95. It was their expansion year, and my dad. I was just like, good, I was in good Maine. Good colors, yeah. Yeah, just like that. That's all it was. I just like the cat. Honestly, what it was, we were in like Maine with my family, and we just went to like a Reebok store, and my dad was just like, pick a hat. And I just wanted a hat. And I, I come back with a Panthers hat and a Jaguars hat. And I didn't know that those were the those were two expansion teams that year. My dad must have been like, what the fuck? <laughs> he could have been a fan of any team. So I was like, but he ran the, uh, my dad used to be like the manager of the youth soccer league in my town. So he would like put the teams together and like name the teams. And then he would be my coach. And he was like, but the so the Jaguars hat didn't say anything on the back, but the Panthers hat said Panthers on the back. And he was like, you can get this hat, and you can uh, and we can call your team the Panthers this year, and you can wear that hat, and you can pretend it's like your team hat. And I was like, oh, good idea. And that's how I got that hat. <laughs> and then it completely fucked my life up. It's such a god awful team. So speaking of sports, I saw um, actually. They followed us on uh, Birdies the movie. Followed us on Instagram. They did. Yeah. So we followed them back. Oh wow. And then I uh, watched it, and you're you know a golf pro and yes so are you a golfer at all no not at all dude and i noticed they were cutting your swing <laughs> dude i have yeah i got one like lesson from uh the club pro where we where we shot it's just like a couple guys i know in wilmington um it's really just one guy i knew and now i know a bunch of guys but it was one guy who like i shot something with a few years ago and he was like we're making this golf movie uh we and we want you to play the, the main character and it was may 2021 so la was still super shut down and i was like so depressed and i was happy to get out and i just wanted to go to a bar so bad and that was uh so i was like 100 percent. he like hit me back and he was like i don't think we can afford you the budget turns out is like a lot lower than we thought it was going to be and i was like make an offer dude i want to go i want to want to get out of la so bad and it was very low but i was like 100 percent, i'll do it and it was a blast i got for like three weeks got to go to to wilmington uh but yes yeah, this golf movie where like it's like a a, a country club versus another country club the two owners like make a bet or something whoever they put put a team together and whoever loses has to whoever wins gets to buy you the other country club your, yeah you gotta win the country club or yeah yeah lose that's how you know those bets that's how yeah, they yeah, go yeah, classic We're betting our country clubs uh but i play this character who, like it was a golf phenom in college and uh dude <laughs> should we do it for this podcast at some point watch watch birdies <laughs> it is, it's something else i play this golf phenom uh, and I come back and I like join the team and I save the team. I'm so good, but I fucking can't golf. I've golfed a few times with my friends back in the day with my dad, but I just suck so bad. And you can so easily see in the movie that I, I'm not a golfer <laughs> and I'm playing this phenom. So they're at, they add sound effects whenever I hit the ball. It's just like, pew. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and just to be like, make it seem like I'm hitting the ball. Yeah. But yeah, there was a lot of uh swings and and just really bad golf incidents that they had to they had to eventually like stop using a ball and just like add a cgi ball because i was hitting hitting the ball so bad there's there's one scene it was like three weeks i was there and it was the last couple days we finally shot the tournament they had a bunch of extras come in and just play people uh you know at, at the tournament and i lead off and i'm supposed to do like this drive that just leads off the whole tournament 
there's a shot of there's all these people behind they maybe got like 30 or 40 extras to be in the back and i just like have this driver and i'm supposed to just like tee off and then everyone just goes yeah and then then we're underway and it's like the the finale tournament and and i go and I go to swing and I hit the ball and I just miss the ball and everyone just starts laughing at me dude. and it's so embarrassing but some people are just like like feel bad and just you can tell they just don't know if they should laugh but people are just like snickering it's not like a fun laugh it's like a, they like feel bad for me oh laugh. yeah no, and then I was there. like I was like I got it I got it so I try it again and it just goes straight like 90 degrees forward and into like they have like a, a, a tent with like the cameras and it just goes like in there. It's just like hits on for like a railing and like rattles around. It's like, all right, I think we got the shot. We'll, keep moving. we'll just like, we'll, add, we'll, we'll yeah. just see CGI. Yeah. My God. Yeah. They kept, so they have like drone shots too. And they kept trying to get this drone shot of me just like hitting. Uh, it's like a par three and I had like a seven iron. I'm just trying to, it's like a 150 yards and I just like a pretty easy shot. And I kept just like, I could not hit this ball, especially I'm so bad when people are like looking. And oh, yeah, especially think, if you're mm -hmm. filming Horrible. and there's a whole like crew and and all the other actors they like golf more so they were all way better than me and i'm <laughs> playing the best golfer but yeah they kept having to like bring the drone out and i would just like miss or shank it and then they'd have to fly the drone all the way back and start <laughs> over man that was one that was like the, supposed to be the 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 climax i'm supposed to the last hole i hit like a hole in one i come out and i go it's the perfect hole and i take out a two iron uh and i just fucking just rip it straight but before I do that, I get the crowd like jacked up and I get like this chant going, birdies, birdies, it's like my team. And the whole town is behind me. And I'm like, yeah, and it's like, I was getting super into it. It was like fun, like acting. I was like really in the moment. And then I go to I go to hit the ball and just go to, so I'm supposed to just like crush it like 400 yards with a two iron. And I just rear back and I just let it rip. And it just, I the, the club hits like a foot in front, the ground, like a foot in front of the tee. It just buries into the dirt. It's like, thump, like that. And everyone just lost it. I, just, I was just, I got laughed at a lot in the filming of that movie. That scene with uh, Woody Harrelson and Steven Root, you know, it says in the book, it was talking about how Anton Chigurh killed like a federal judge in 1979 in the book that y'all read. Yeah, yeah. And it was talking about how Woody Harrelson's uh, dad was a contract oh, yeah. killer that killed a judge in 1979. I saw, yeah, it's like based on his dad almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah apparently they think Woody Harrelson's dad killed JFK. What? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that. Mm hmm. Hmm. His dad is Lee Harvey Oswald. Heavier quarters. And His now. dad is John Wilkes Booth. <laughs> Does, doesn't know names of assassinators. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the last thing we got you, but you could speak on the significance of this. Whoa! Oh fuck, dude! Hell yeah! Damn, man, you guys are, you guys are uh, the the nicest men in the world. <laughs> God damn! Yes, it's Tyler Childers. This is my guy. This is my favorite singer, Tyler Childers. I actually got a, a tattoo. I got two tattoos on my calves. I'm getting them both removed. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, I just don't like him anymore. But one of them is a Tyler Childers, like, uh, um, it's like the tour poster from a, a show I went to once. And the other one is this guy named Gary Allen, the singer I like. Oh, yeah. Uh, and it's like his logo. And I'm getting them both removed because I just don't fucking want calf tattoos anymore. <laughs> but they are both so sick. Um, but yeah, Tyler's the man, dude. He's blown up so much. It's like $300 for like nosebleeds from now. But I saw him. I'm like when he was kind of on the up and up, I get I didn't see him on the up and up, but he was like playing at like the Troubadour in L.A., which I just went to like two weeks ago, and it's like a super small, intimate place. I remember as many he was performing there, but like th three, four years ago, and when must have been when I found him. But he's got a sweet angel voice, and that's why he's blowing up. But thank yeah. you for this. This the is bad. The background that's Red Rocks. Uh, didn't you see? Oh didn't... shit, that is Red Rocks. Yeah, I didn't yeah. notice that. That's what the tattoo is. Oh yeah, it's like uh, it's like this fox, but then there's like uh, some red rocks on it. Oh, do you know this? Is that why you got that? I did not know you had a tattoo of it. I just saw you and your dad went. I just oh, thought, no way. you know, I no, that's so sick. Thought oh, I'd maybe get yeah. you a little sentimental, maybe. <laughs> yeah, dude. This is a yes. This is like from the tour poster. It's this like fox. Oh, he likes foxes, I guess. And, uh, <laughs> and anybody sitting foxes and red rocks. Foxes and red rocks, dude. <laughs> the Doctor Seuss book. Yeah, it's just sitting between these red rocks. It's a cool scene right here. When he gets uh. Yeah. The uh the key blown into his chest. Oh. <laughs> this made me want one of those uh air cow killers. Yeah, yeah. air guns. Yeah. I'm like, man, just, just for killers. not to kill anyone, but just to like blow stuff through doors. <laughs> just open doors. <laughs> open doors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No so one's ever sick. locking me out of shit. <laughs> Your roommate's just furious all the time. <laughs> Stop again blowing my lock out of my door. 
I don't even go in the room. I just want to blow the rock, the lock out of the door. I feel like they're both so good at just setting traps for the other one. Yeah. Like even when he drives the truck into the cars when he's running away, you're just like, why would you do that? And then it's like, oh, he's making him think he like got shot and oh, yeah, he's in yeah. the car still. Oh, is that what he's doing? <laughs> yeah, so he immediately drives the truck into there yeah, and yeah. then runs across the other street to yeah. get cover. Yeah. And it's like because and you watch Anton Shakur, he's like setting a trap for him to walk up to the car and think he's in there. Okay. Still. I, yeah, I just thought it was hard to drive with another dead person right there. <laughs> I mean and it could have been part of it, but it, to me it looked like he was setting a trap. That makes sense. Uh I, I love too just all throughout this scene how cool he is when he you know he shoots the shotgun and he immediately just Puts it on his back and just jumps out the window. You know, he's constantly yeah. just... He really, he gave himself a chance. Yeah, He lasted yeah. a lot longer than I would have lasted. Oh. I'm so apologetic. I'm like, yeah, I'm so sorry. Here's your money. I'm so sorry. You could kill me. <laughs> yeah. I would apologize when I was, like, at the scene giving the guy water. I was just... I was just... I was hunting deer. Run. Yeah, man. He gives himself a chance. You, you really... Uh, you root for him. Poor bloody hot ass Josh Brolin. <laughs> <laughs> you guys ever shoot guns? Uh, no, not really. I mean, I have shot a gun before, but yeah, you know, about as much as you play golf. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I did a show in like uh, in Oklahoma City, or the the host like took me in the feature out. She has a shit ton of guns, big ones. And I was like, this is just, this is not for me. <laughs> it's like just terrifying to me. It's those big ones. I want to shoot that that big one. Like, nah. I'll shoot the, the little guy into, into the grass. <laughs> I guess if that's if your hobby is like shooting it into the grass, I guess. I feel like you were like, surely I'll ask this gun question and these Alabama kids are gonna be like, Yeah, we got guns. Woo, we got <laughs> guns, roll tide. <laughs> that's all we do, shoot guns. <laughs> shoot guns and pull for the tide. <laughs> oh, this gentleman. This is so sad. Poor I guy. Oh, yeah, like, this I ain't right through the you. neck. Doom, throat shot. Oh. Dude. Oh, also, what a just, oh, it, like he needed the headshot. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's like, honestly, you want the headshot. I think if you're getting uh, shot in the throat, yeah, it's like in this blood yeah. pouring that out of your nice throat. Of him, now that I think about it, yeah, Anton Shakur is really a gentleman killer. He is. He's a nice guy. He was probably flipping the coin back there too. Should, should, <laughs> should I shoot him in the head right now? All right, I'll shoot him in the head. Yeah, that's brutal. There's just some gruesome shit in this movie. Getting shot through the neck. That's one of my biggest fears. I would say. Can he shot, shot he the shot neck. the neck while I'm, while hot ass Josh Brolin. <laughs> he was just hitch. sitting there so weirdly though, and he's like, "I'm not gonna hurt you." He's just like looking back, mm-hmm. waiting to get shot through the neck. <laughs> Look like he's just like being a little too still. <laughs> yeah, just like even right here, it just cracks me up how quickly he is to get out of the crash car and just yeah, run, yeah. scurry run away, scurry across the street. It is funny to just think he's just like running in steel toed boots the whole <laughs> <Yeah>. time. <too. laughs> like it's not like he's got like Nike flyers on or anything <laughs> yeah. like that. Like, like goddamn. <laughs> yeah. And even I think even in later in the movie he walks in and he's like, The boots are fine, I need everything mm-hmm. else. It's like, <laughs> yeah. dude, get some get running some sneakers. Shoes. Dude. Yeah. You are in a fight with a killer. <laughs> yeah, he's got so many blisters on his feet. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> They're perfect for getting away. Phil Nike. Like <laughs> Phil Knight figured this out with Nike. <laughs> Actually, it's probably. I bet Nike didn't come out till later. It might have been around around the same time. Nineteen eighty. I feel like yeah, the seventies yeah, when you had the uh, the late seventies was when Nike was starting. Yeah. I think. Well, yeah. I mean, they got Jordan like eighty four. Yeah, eighty four. Yeah. Like he kind of put them on the. They were around, I guess. Or were they still like? Yeah, um, they were just running shoes for a while. That's right. So maybe. So I, mean, yeah, yeah. So I nailed it even more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you could put Jack Links in this movie, you can put some, <laughs> some Nike running shoes. <laughs> Dude, the uh, um, the suitcase with all the money in it. Here's another fact I learned: it's the same suitcase from Fargo. That's awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's and it looks in great shape. <laughs> For the longest time, I thought the Coen Brothers wrote Dumb and Dumber because it's just another movie about a suitcase of money. Yeah, like they have that. <laughs> all in they a lot do of their is their suitcase of money. And the stuff. Fairly Brothers, you know, the Fairly Brothers. Yeah, you knew I, it was brothers. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, the Coen Brothers are hilarious. <laughs> you know, Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> I've yeah, dreamed of working with movies. the Coen big, Brothers. Big Lebowski. Yeah, yeah. yeah. This I don't. I mean, maybe maybe the border situation was a little bit more lax in 1980, but this is. This part is crazy to me. Yeah, yeah. He just mm-hmm. walks across the border. Wall, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's just like covered in blood crossing the border. This is great. He's... Dude, these characters are going to get cast as this. I think we could I think us three could play we these. We could be great at these God, you walk up and look uh look scared and and concerned. Look at look at that face <laughs> Brolin's making there. Yeah, it's like, it'd, be, 
I don't know. I think we'd struggle not to be turned on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, dude, you are so handsome. God, yeah. <laughs> Is there anything I can do for wow, you? Wow, <laughs> look at... You got a shower, dude. You can shoulders. come over. Look at those strong Can I take shoulders. care of you? <laughs> <laughs> dude, I can fix you. <laughs> He's like, give me that shirt, and you take both of them off. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I do like that he's like, how, you know, give me the beer. He's like, how much? And then it's just like, dude, give him the beer. Give him the beer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, he just takes like, Look at this, bro. <laughs> give me that beer, too. How much? Brian, give him the beer. Yeah, I love when they do this. It's just fucking a crazy showdown between these two guys. Then there's just like civilians that just like happen to see part of it. And they're like, oh my God, dude. We're Brian, that's even funny. Brian, Brian give Brian, him the beer. Brian, give him the beer. Brian, not cool, man. It's funny. There's a couple little like jokes in this that are like, what a, what a feisty, oh, fun little break. Tommy Lee Jones has so many like just funny little clever yeah, lines. Yeah, he's clever in this. It feels like the scenes, they have a lot of rhythm where, I mean, serious stuff's happening but it just will end on a little joke or just something mm -hmm. that he says it's it's like oh yeah that's crazy yeah, yeah i kind of chuckled when he was like they say mexicans or they say coyotes won't eat a mexican <laughs> i was just thinking like i was waiting for him to be like too spicy <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's my favorite comedy this movie <laughs> this is the funniest movie i've ever seen <laughs> templeton eagles <laughs> go templeton eagles baby how you could sleep at all in this movie. Yeah, especially on just stairs. I even <laughs> thought when he's like laying down in the bed that night, and then he's like, there's no, there ain't no way. Yeah. I know he's talking about them tracking him. Like, there's no way, because that's when he finds the tracker. Yeah. But to me, when I first watched it, I thought he was talking about trying to sleep. <laughs> he's yeah. like, there ain't no ain't way no. I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. <laughs> Not tonight. I was like, man, I relate to well, that. <laughs> that's me every night. Yeah. Well, ain't no way. There ain't no, there ain't no hookup for a CPAP machine in here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in his trailer. <laughs> There just ain't no way. These guys, so this song they were singing in Spanish, the lyrics were like, uh, something you flew too close to the sun and got oh. burned and everything fell apart. Or wow. Whatever. But it's kind of like about what's mm -hmm. happening to them. There's another little, another little nugget. Man, yeah. Mr. Movies over here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, well, check out 30 facts you didn't know about <laughs> No Country for Old Men. I love doing that after I watch a movie, watch just like fun facts about yeah. it. Him doctoring his wounds, Javier Bardem. Yeah. And like shooting himself up with, I assume that's painkiller. Yeah. Is so just methodical. I love that in movies. <laughs> People, uh, I love uh, cleaning wounds, like bullet yeah, wounds. Yeah, me too. Like, like, Rambo, all yeah, the yeah. movies that do Mark that. Mark shooter. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love Rambo, man. Yeah, Rambo would have been a good one. But no, it is cool how they show, like there's a lot of scenes that mirror each other, like how... Josh Brolin, how he gets uh, medical help, and then how he, you know, it's completely mm -hmm. different how Shigor does it. And even what you're saying when he's taking the wound on the toilet seat, they both have that scene where he's t he's attending to his feet. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But then what's so funny is he looks so, like, feminine when he's doing it. He has, well, like, his yeah, legs he's, crossed. Yeah, yeah. He's naked. Dude, you it's see like, his whole, like, like, his toenails. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look like, yeah, you see just, like, his whole thigh and his butt. It's like, it's like mm. <laughs> This, like, this place, I guess, whatever the name of that, of this pharmacy is it was like a a market that the uh cohen brothers used to go to and they named really? it after that man there's fact, a fact number four something, yeah, something yeah. Duff, <laughs> duff bros or something and it's crazy he just like hates part of it is like he doesn't want to get blood on the whatever but he also just like doesn't like blood you can say when he like pulls the curtain mm -hmm, and like yeah. shoots that guy because he's like doesn't want to get blood on him. Me, he's though. always like putting his feet up when yeah, the blood's coming when, he's like woody harrelson yeah 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 he just doesn't like blood that is weird. Yeah, Here he's we like go. a, he's like a germaphobe. Him. Yeah, yeah. That looks. It looks awful. so real. Oh, it really does. Look at that oh, thing when yeah. the blood starts like oozing mm. out a little bit here. Oh, look at that face. Mm. <laughs> this is where he starts painting his nails, huh? <laughs> his toenails. Yeah, so methodical. There he is. That should be the movie poster. <laughs> See, yeah, now he's all clean. I love that. And he's gonna now he's just gonna heal up. Put some neosporin on it and heal right up. Love watching a villain heal up. <laughs> <laughs> it just takes him like a day. It, you know, he feels like he's back to normal the next day. Yeah, yeah. There he is. Tommy Lee. Oh, yeah. He has, a, he has a fun face to look at, Tommy Lee Jones. What do you think about being yeah, a Lord, police no. officer and not having a gun on you? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he doesn't carry a gun, right? No, even like and when they're about saying, to like, go in the trailer, um, Agent Doofus or whatever his name is, yeah. is like, you got your gun? Mm -hmm. He's like, I'll be right behind you. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
he just has so many really good yeah, quotes great. and yeah, dialogue. Man. Oh, yeah, he's so, like, his whole, like, uh, monologue at the end. Um, mm-hmm. That's a great, just like, yeah, just a, a promo for the movie. He's talking about his dad, that dream I had, and then I woke up, and it's just, like, it ends. I, he well, doesn't even, even talk like, all day. Him being retired and just, like, not knowing his place and trying to offer to do chores and, like, help yeah. out. She's like, you better not do that. Yeah. And just, like. Yeah, it is an interesting. This guy like, needs to go play golf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It'll be. It'll make you happier. It won't ruin your life at all. And this fucking guy. This is a fun role. <laughs> this guy just like moving bodies around. What is yeah, his with, job? No, not correct equipment. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess tie it down. Yeah, it is like I guess a look at like life and death or whatever. He's like constantly just thinking about. He's older now. Mm-hmm. What's what legacy is he gonna leave behind? Like is his life mostly over? He's retiring, and then. The Shigura character just operates on like a coin flip, and it's just like how fickle life is, I guess, is a theme. Do you think uh, he killed her at the end of the movie? I think so, because he yeah, checks his he boots. He checks his boots. I imagine he's just checking his boots for a reason. There he is. Now, finally, he got some sleep. <laughs> yeah, up, ain't no good. way. <laughs> ain't no way I'm in this hospital. <laughs> had to get Woody woke. Harrelson's great in this movie, too. He's awesome. He looks cool in a hat. That's a man that looks cool in a hat. I couldn't wear that hat. hat. Yeah, no way. We if we look if so I had dumb. that hat on, I look freaking ridiculous. Yes, right I don't now. know. I don't know what makes it let, that you look good in a hat or not. But I know that I don't look good in a cowboy hat. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you that. I think you got to be believable as a cowboy. I guess. Yeah, it's like the way you act. I do love in the end when he's just sitting there in the chair and Anton Chigurh is about to kill him. He's just like. I'm a day trader. <laughs> I'm a day trader. Yeah, I've, I've changed. I'm not who you think I am. I'll, I'll leave. You'll never see me again. You don't have to do this. I'm a day trader. I could just go home. That's a guy I've heard. That phone ringing when he's sitting there. Oh, yeah, it's just letting it ring. And the phone's Bang. ringing. It's, like, terrifying. Yeah. The first it's just like, ring. <laughs> yeah. It breaks oh. the silence. It's like, oh, my God. That was him shooting me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank God. And just a moment later, he shoots him. <laughs> thank God it was just the phone. One question we ask all our guests, uh, how do you find out Santa Claus wasn't real? I actually believe in Santa Claus later than most children. <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, I still. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think when I first figured it out, because I noticed that the handwriting <laughs> on the present was my dad's. He has very distinct A's, <laughs> and he wrote, from Santa. And I was like, man, that's how my dad does his A's. <laughs> but I remember believing in him in like probably second grade, third grade. And most kids usually are like kindergarten, first grade, they stop believing. But I remember saying something to a kid one time too, and I was like, something about Santa. And they were like, Santa? Santa's not real. And I was like, I, I know, I'm joking. <laughs> but I remember that I was like having a wake up call, be like, fuck, Ryan, you idiot. <laughs> I was like, still like kind of wanting to believe. Oh, yeah. Like, I kind of heard that he wasn't real, but I kind of still like, maybe he is, though. Anyone that shows up and gives you presents seems pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Boom, that's cool what we're guy. going for. <laughs> when did you guys stop believing in Santa? <laughs> I, I hate it when you tell your story because I was like, oh, I didn't stop believing until fifth grade. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were about to bond. Like, oh, yeah, we were yeah. about fifth grade. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that that I remember there was a Santa came, a Santa came to my school in uh, third grade, and I remember that's when it was. I said second, so so I made it try to seem like <laughs> you were trying to be cool. Yeah, I was trying to. Yeah, but it was third grade. You still have some trauma there. But he, yeah, and he came in a uh, and he had like a really nice suit. He had like a nice silk suit, and he was just visiting all the classrooms. And then he had a station wagon that was like a red station wagon that was like red and white and said like Santa's sleigh or whatever on it. And I was like, man, that. That's the way he could be Santa. It's like a really nice suit. And he has like the, the whole Santa station wagon. That was like my thinking behind it. I was like, yeah, he's real. He doesn't like fly through the air, but he's a real guy. He doesn't have flying reindeer. He does station like, yeah, wagon. Yeah, he drives. Flying reindeer aren't real, but Santa is. Come on, yeah. guys. Yeah. The practicality of the station wagon made you believe more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck, dude. Yeah, that's how he gets around. Didn't believe they the flying great reindeer. They gas mileage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, back then, for sure. Yeah, third grade is the answer. Third grade is when I stopped believing in Santa. So I must have been eight years old. That's pretty old. Not as old as fifth grade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were losers. <laughs> well, yeah. we're 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, you guys are cool now. <laughs> you guys are pretty. You don't believe in any of that shit. What, uh, have you ever taken anything like ridiculous into a movie theater? Or snuck anything into a movie theater? Have I snuck anything ridiculous into a movie theater? <laughs> so you look over to Frankie Muniz like, help, Frankie. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I have, but I was I actually forgot to do this. We went to, what did we see? So I think we were seeing like Top Gun or something recently. And I got this device. It's called the Pooter. You know the Pooter? I do not. A, a fake fart machine? Yeah. But it's just like <laughs> God, a, known. It's like a it's just like a piece of rubber. You like make the the noise yourself. It doesn't like you know, it's not like electronic or anything. But you just like you can make different noises with it. You cup it against your and they also sell pooter wax. <laughs> Buy a pooter dot com. It's this guy, he's really good at doing pooters and he just makes these videos going through Walmart doing the pooter. But I forgot it. And I was like, God, I was so pissed. It's like middle of the movie. You see the like in a Oppenheimer when uh, <laughs> yeah, a guy yeah. just farts. Yeah, like that. That's great. Rise of the credit. bomb just about to drop. <laughs> yeah, and the whole theater laughs. I love that it's just like you hear it and then you hear somebody like clearly far off be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how do you not laugh that? the no. of it. <laughs> That would have ruined the whole movie for it. I would just be like, that was so good. Like, I'm going to leave. Yeah, 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 that was the that high was, point. That was the climax right there. <laughs> that guy just stands at the theater. But Thank what everybody. I wonder, did that guy, did he like see the movie once and then go back being like, okay, I'm going to time up this far like, I'm, I'm okay, yeah. right. do you yeah. think he had a pooter i don't know it or sounded pretty real it sounded real but so does the pooter <laughs> buy a pooter.com it sounds pretty real did you invest in this <laughs> i bought multiple So I don't think I've ever brought anything crazy into movie theater, but I have thought about it once. <laughs> yeah, I thought about Just it. Just as cool. <laughs> this is pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, we would always sneak candy and stuff. Yeah. I mean, still do. But yeah, as a kid, just like, I mean, if you go to like a movie theater now, it's like eight bucks for some Mike and Ikes. I'm like, I'll just, uh, you're not going to stop me from sneaking so much candy in. I think I brought a sandwich once. That's kind of funny. It's like a whole sandwich. <laughs> it's like I made it at like home. Like a pub sub? Yeah, just like, you know, two slices, just like a. Oh, you like made, a sandwich you made bag. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was like a turkey sandwich. You kind of have to now for like those three and a half hours. Oh, my movies. God. Yeah. Yeah, I did uh, saw uh, the new Avatar on Mushrooms. That's a great way to like make the time go by. Oh, yeah. That was a long ass movie, but it went by and it was a blast. Mm -hmm. I was just, I feel like you're in the water. That movie, it just was so ridiculous how the kids just kept getting kidnapped over and over. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. And I would imagine on Mushrooms, you'd be like, I, am I just seeing the yeah. same thing? Yeah. <laughs> Is he starting this movie over? I feel like we've seen this scene. That's one crazy thing about doing like a bunch of, especially like multiple shows in a night, is especially with like how drunk I will end up getting. I'll be doing like the second show and I can't tell if I've done a joke already or if it was from the earlier show because it like just happened and I'm drunk and I've been doing this joke every night for like two weeks. So I'll just be like in the middle of a joke and be like, I'll stop. I'd like ask a guy recently. I was like, did I, did I do this joke already? He's like in the middle of the set and he's like, no, that was last night. I was like, okay, okay, great. It's like, you start to just lose your mind. I hate doing multiple shows in a night. It's the worst. But that's you what ever, you gotta do for Have money. you ever performed on Mushrooms? No, oh thank God, <laughs> no. It's hard enough, to, I was trying to get better at like doing it high, because it when it goes well, it's so fun, when you're just like super silly and loose, and your mind just kind of goes to more, you know, different places that it usually wouldn't go. But when it's bad, it's so scary. <laughs> <laughs> and I just like keep losing track of where I, but yeah, this whole past weekend, like Missouri was a lot of, the people that were like running things, like taking me everywhere, they smoke a lot, so we'd get high every, like before the show every single night, and. I was just doing a lot of time and like not a lot of jokes. I was just like wandering a lot and just wasting people's time. Uh, so I gotta like to get, not do that. Gotta be a little bit more together. Um, yeah, then I did like the club, a club in uh, in St. Louis the weekend after. I didn't smoke at all, and it was, you just are. It's so noticeable how different my mind works. I'm just like able to remember my jokes. <laughs> like I know what comes after what, but it's not. It's less fun. Sometimes it's just like less fun. Like being just a little bit more loosey goosey. Yeah. That's, uh, that's just like drugs in general. It's like I'm so much better of a yeah. person, but I'm, yeah, a little less fun. Yeah, you notice your brain works better, but it's less fun. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, never done uh, mushrooms on stage. I love mushrooms though, but never done them on stage. I imagine it would be just like all my other sets, just a fucking disaster. <laughs> Have I done this joke already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's like, is the, did I write that? Am I this joke? <laughs> you know who it is. Yeah, they're never on uh, on screen together. 
I guess oh, maybe when he's are. like chasing him down, it's like the closest they get. Yeah, yeah. I guess they're. He kind of when he shoots, shoots them, at but you him, don't really they, see him. Yeah, they're not yeah. really. You just see the gun flash. So they That's just like. True. What if they just never like? They just hate each they other. Never met. Yeah. Yeah. They <laughs> still, still haven't met. <laughs> Shoot around each other. <laughs> Here it is. Classic. I think that might have been in the Boom. trailer. So smooth. I do love after he gets off this phone call too. He just kind of looks back at Woody Harrelson. Uh, I don't know. He just gives him. It gives him another one of those looks. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you're like making sure he's still dead. This guy's crazy. <laughs> His looks throughout the movie. I mean, just. I think the most seen that a, that is the look. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, he is so good. It's just little, it's little things that he does. But even the look in his eyes when he's straying on that guy in the beginning. Oh yeah, and he's just like, like oh that's happy, so bad. But like mm -hmm. being, ca but like chaotic. Yeah, yeah. They it's start just... this movie with a bang. Oh, who's your favorite performance in this movie? I guess Javier Bardem. Yeah. Okay. Surprising. I mean, I mean, yeah, Josh Brolin is the... He's great. He's the I, I just, he's he's hot, he has my favorite line in the movie when he goes, ain't no low I just ranked him in hotness. I thought that's <laughs> yeah. how you were going to answer. <laughs> yeah, he's great. I, should, I love that guy in the, uh, the from the coin flip, the guy running the shop with the jack links. He yeah. Yeah. yeah, he's great. Yeah, I always wonder if the conversation he'd have with his wife, like about that. Oh, you wouldn't believe I yeah. had the darndest customer. Hey, weirdest fella came in today. <laughs> See, what's the most you lost on a coin toss? <laughs> Made me call it. And that woman from the trailer park. Now that I'm watching this mm -hmm. another, another time, like man, she's she's great. My favorite, I think, is one of the guys that has the chicken crates. He's like, "Where do you think I should fly out?" And he's like, "Well, I think you should blah 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 blah." Well, like he answers yeah, yeah. every, he says everything well. with "well." Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he takes his his truck. <laughs> he's just being helpful. Well, airport or airstrip? Airport. Well, where are you going? I don't know. Just lighting out for the territories, huh? <laughs> Brother, I've been there. Well, there's airstrips. The airport is El Paso. Yeah, you seem nice. Yeah, poor guy. I would never have gotten back in the country. Dude. If this had been me, it'd be like, do you serve? I'd be like, no. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> serve like, what? Yeah. Kick rocks. <laughs> yes. Yeah. When you're like, yeah, you're able to try to make up like the infantry or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Flat 75th industry <laughs> yeah. infirmary. The what? What, <laughs> yeah, like, what date? No, like, clearly not even a war time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm just going to walk back. Sorry, sorry, sorry for bothering your time. Are you jacking with me? Don't jack with me. Yeah, this is his first time he kind of like bows down to someone. He goes, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. The rest of the movie is such I respect a, the badge. I respect the badge. <laughs> I served. Are you jacking with me? Oh, no, sir. Don't jack with me. Yes, sir. You in the service? Uh, no, sir. I'm a veteran. Ma'am? Uh, yes, sir. Two tours. What outfit? 12th Infantry Battalion, uh, August 7th, 1966, July 2nd, 1968. So, Ryan, what do you think uh, your favorite comedy movie is? Man, whoo. I mean, I used to, I always loved Ben Stiller. I love a lot of Ben Stiller movies. Um, Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> and, like, <laughs> The Heartbreak Kid and shit. But the hardest I think I've ever laughed in a movie was uh, This Is The End. That's a great one. It was yeah. so fucking funny. As like an adult, I guess the hardest I laugh. Even when I'm a kid, I laughed at sillier things. <laughs> uh, yeah, I love like a lot of Jim Carrey stuff and Ben Stiller and, and Will Ferrell and stuff. It's like very silly stuff. Um, but Starsky and Hutch, I think, is my favorite Ben Stiller. You guys ever watched that? Is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I, love, I fucking love that. No, man. the scene where he does the cocaine, thinking it's just like sugar. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, that's yeah. hysterical. <laughs> what do you um, like, blondes or brunettes? Blondes. Good, because I'll take anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Along Came Polly. I love that. Oh, one. Yeah, oh yeah. That's a great one. Yeah, Phil Seymour Hoffman, that, that <laughs> yeah. basketball scene. <laughs> yeah. Dude, Phil, that's one of the best Pratt Falls I've ever seen when Philip Seymour Hoffman walks into the wedding venue and just eats shit. <laughs> and it's just like, just one shot of him just going down so hard. I'm a big fake fall guy. I've been doing a lot of fake falls lately and just having like my friends film it. <laughs> him playing basketball is great. Oh, rain yeah. man! Rain man! Rain dance! <laughs> Old school! Let it rain! Let it rain! Rain dance! No for scuba. Yeah, it's so funny casting him in that. No for, you off for scuba? <laughs> Ruben, you off for scuba? <laughs> I often feel though that like those serious actors when they do comedies, I really, I usually appreciate their range more. Like I, yeah. I understand how good they are at acting if they yeah. can do oh, both. Man. Yeah, man, it's a lot of comedies. If it's good, it's like you're not just like trying to be funny. You're just like being genuine. Mm -hmm. Like they see that uh, six days in hell. I think it was called that tennis thing. Yeah, they had that. And that Sam Game Bergen of Thrones guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had John Snow from Game of Thrones. It's like such a serious actor, but he's so funny in it because he's so sincere and genuine. <laughs> That's what's funny. He's not like trying to be a goof. 
He's just like a really good actor. That playing last this. boardroom speech for Philip Seymour Hoffman in that movie is incredible. From which movie? In Along Came Polly. Oh, yeah. When he's like, <laughs> when he's covering him for the insurance. Yeah. I think that's incredible. Yeah, dude, Philip Seymour Hoffman. What is he? Yeah. Getting like everything he's in, he's just. When you need to do a comedy and you're just like, he's such a good actor in a comedy. You're like, man, that is, that's impressive. And not just like just being funny. It's like just a believable character in this, this absurd world. <laughs> Rain Man. <laughs> what was I watching? I just watched Twister. He was in, I never watched that before. He's Twister? in that. Yeah, that's an early I've film. Been, I've never oh, seen yeah. it either. Oh, yeah. it's really, I mean, I say it's really good. It's ridiculous. I almost ruined it, but it's good. good. Just because, you know, the reviews are all right, but it's just like, I think I feel like I need to watch this. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I watched it as a kid, and it's definitely like, <laughs> I don't know. It's hard There's to be a... like, it's great. <laughs> it's uh, it's, it's cool. De- definitely yeah, it's at the time, it was cool. I remember it being a pretty badass movie at the time. It was like, it's a fucking bunch of tornadoes. Yeah, oh, yeah. Now you're just like, yeah, it's kind of dumb. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we we got to deal with too much of that now. Bam, already. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You don't need to watch movies haven't about been tornadoes. Through a couple of them. It's like, that was not my experience. <laughs> there were not <laughs> flying cows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a cow flying through your window. <laughs> <laughs> May he rest in peace. Oh, she's great. In oh, yeah, she kills it. I got the cancer. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She's a little bit more character-y. She's the reason that Lou Allen dies, though. Oh, yeah. She's so great. She gives it away. Yeah, she fucked up. It just sucks. You know how many bitch. people I know in El Paso? <laughs> they, they That's how many. many. That's how many. <laughs> Here we are. 90 degree heat. I got the cancer. And look at this. Not even my home to go to. We're going to El Paso, Texas. You know how many people I know in El Paso, Texas? Oh, ma'am. That's how many. So what do you think about not seeing Llewellyn die? Was it disappointing the first time through? Uh, yeah, I, 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 want, I don't, like, I don't want a, a, a mystery at the end. I want to see you blow her head off is what I want. Or not. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I guess it's cool to leave it open-ended. I, always what about, like, I like seeing a death. But What about Llewellyn in the hotel we just walk in and he's dead we didn't get to see oh, that oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, Llewellyn. oh i thought you were talking about carla jean no carla no. jean yeah they both have Dude, my girlfriend yeah. was like Lou Ellen's a girl's name i was like i've only know one <laughs> yeah. Lou Ellen, and it's a man and hey, a I badass think, man i was like yeah Lou Ellen. yeah she dies <laughs> why are you asking me yeah that was a bummer that just happened so fast mm-hmm. when they just kill Llewellyn. It now, now I like I like it, but the first time I watched it, it was definitely like, oh yeah, the first time I'm like, did oh, I miss shit, did oh, I miss fuck. something? <laughs> I'm still like twenty minutes over. left. I was, yeah, yeah, I was like, wait, like, why is the movie still going? I'm so yeah. confused. There's twenty five minutes left of this movie. I the first time I watched it, I was like disappointed because I was like, Me too. so he dies, and then there's just this twenty five minute conversation, and the movie's over. Yeah. Like, what the hell? And <laughs> yeah. then like as I watched it more times, I'm just like, this movie's great. Yeah, and I like well, like but it's real life. You yeah. just uh, you just you, you just find a person dead sometimes. <laughs> you think it's the main character, but yeah. Well, the book makes it clear that uh, Tommy Lee Jones is the main character a little bit more. Yeah. When he goes back at the end and the knob has been pushed off the door or blown off the door, Tommy Lee. Yeah, yeah. Would do you think Javier Bardem had just been there? I think that it's just like his anxiety, like he's 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 thinking what he's about to face type of thing. Yeah. He's almost imagining it, where it's like, were you thinking this, that that thing man. wasn't actually blown out of the door? Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he, he had been there, I think, but I think he left earlier. And yeah, and Tommy yeah. Lee Jones was just like, he's gonna still be inside. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when they show him like in the shadows, sitting there, that's just like his imagination. That's what I, I mean, think. Yeah, yeah. That's what I think. He opens the door, he's not really there. I know what beer leads to. No, thank you, Miss. Bear leads to more bear. She has a weird accent. She's like bear. Yeah. Bear leads to more bear. Oh man, I, I know what bear leads to. <laughs> bear leads to more bear. This looks like a lot of the hotels I've been staying in on this trip. <laughs> <laughs> man. And some shit holes. Just right by the Hardys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or Carl's nice Jr. Pool, though. As I say, a West Coast is Carl's Yeah, pool. yeah, I had to... That might be a Hardy's, though. It is Hardy's. <laughs> I think it is a Hardy's, yeah. I don't know. Was Hardy's around in 19? Yeah, we got to fact check this. Yeah. I don't know about There's that. some bullshit. Man, they Bear. probably partnered with Jack's Links. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they made so much money off of this movie. Well, I think Read. it's about time we need yeah, to ra- wrap it up. Uh, I don't know. I don't 
I feel like we've got a good job. I don't, I don't know. You guys don't have any more gifts? That's <laughs> it? <laughs> you guys yeah, suck. Yeah, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you guys so much for all this. Thanks yeah. for having me on the cast. Yeah, Appreciate thanks, you doing it, man. Yeah, man, it's well, been Next fun. time you're in town, we'd love to have you back. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah, I would love to. Thanks, boys. All right. <laughs> Signing off. <laughs>